Defiance in the eyes. Leave us. You must do everything the mother of your mother tells you. He's used to being in control. He's used to having everyone listen to him, to be a person of authority. You dismiss my mother in her own house. Come here. Kneel. Now he's encountered the voice and she's able to pull him to her beyond his control. If you've ever had a domineering parent or a person of authority that you felt genuinely afraid of, it's this horrible feeling that you're gonna listen even though you don't want to because you're so scared. And that's what this voice seems like. It takes from a piece of you and can use that fear to be able to control you even though you don't want to. If ever you've wanted to face something that you have a fear or a phobia or an anxiety towards and you either wanna move forward or you wanna stop, but you can't because you are that afraid. How dare you use the voice on me? Paul, as the Reverend Mother already said, has that defiance kind of built into him from his father, that he has this oppositional leadership traits that even in the face of someone that can control him, he still wants to fight back, which in lots of ways can be a great thing and in lots of ways can become very difficult, especially if you have to work in a group. But Paul is meant to lead. Put your right hand in the box. She just goes on to the next piece of it. She, I think, already knows that she would get into a battle with Paul and she just said, this is not gonna be a hill that I'm gonna be dealing with or dying on. Let's just move on to the next part because this part may break him. Your mother bade you obey me. And you can see his head tilt back of, I'm not gonna have to listen to you. His mom has told him to do this and sent him there. So now it's not really about the Reverend Mother why he's following it. It's about also that his mom wanted him to do this. And when we're growing up, we want to please our parents. So he's in this very particular bind with this Reverend Mother that can control him and his mom that brought him here. And he has no clue what's happening, which causes a lot of anxiety. And the way that he deals with it is definitely through being oppositional and trying to be as strong as he can. So he puts his hand in the box. Like the first thing is probably you should ask what's in the box before you put the hand in the box, not after you put your hand in the box. You can see his head tilt of no, like this is probably not a good idea, but these two very powerful women one who is his mom, who he wants to be able to obey, and then this reverend mother who has this power to be able to speak and make him do things anyways. I think that he feels like there is little choice in what he has to do as he kneels there before this very daunting, strong figure. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box and you die. It's in the box. Pain. Here he scoffs at the fact that the only thing that's in the box is pain. We rarely assess a situation before we've gone into it accurately. And often, especially if we're more on the type A personalities, people that are used to doing things and doing very well at them, we over assess our ability to be able to cope. So to this test, he scoffs at that it's only pain that is in the box. No need to call the guards. Your mother stands behind that door. No one will get past her. Why are you doing this? Now the defiance is gone. He's genuinely worried and wondering why this is even happening. So after we decide to fight and we're stuck in a situation, we kind of come to the realization that I'm gonna have to deal with this no matter what. The person that placed him here was not just the Reverend Mother, but his mom herself. That feeling probably leaves some levels of betrayal or mistrust or misunderstanding of why would he have to go through this in the first place. <laughs> so when we go through extreme pain, our anxiety starts to go up. You can see his breathing starts to change. His muscles start to twitch. And when we have to do something that is against our will, we naturally, when we feel pain, and in this case, burning, it's such a strong reaction that actually it doesn't even go to our brain. When you touch a hot stove, our hand, it, the, the reaction to that goes through the nerves, to the hand, to the spinal cord, 
back to the hand to move it. Because it is so dangerous for us to get burnt or damaged, it doesn't even want to take the time that it reaches the brainstem to be able to tell us to move. So he is fighting over a neurological imperative to move his hand as quickly as possible. And that is really hard for us to fight. Silence. I love when she says silence, that he starts to try to control his breathing in order to control what he's doing, which is very effective for dealing with pain management. If you're gonna add doing short, quick breaths, it actually can increase your pain sensors. They will respond more strongly. So what he's doing is trying to control and slow down his breathing so that he has more control over his body and it will actually reduce the amount of pain that he will be able to feel. I would say if I was teaching him to be able to withstand more pain, to also try to image some other area, to put his mind somewhere else because Pain is actually only felt within the brain. It isn't really real. He really feels it, but it is just a mental process. And there are people that are very good at withstanding pain through practicing guided imagery and meditation. So you can withstand a lot of pain and not really feel it if you've trained yourself enough. Fear is the mind killer. It's the little death that brings obliteration. Fear is my fear, no permit to pass over me love that watch jessica she is so scared you can hear her breathing she can barely speak very frightened a mom and then use her bene Gesserit training to be able to recenter herself so that she can be calm and strong for paul she has a mantra something that she says to herself to keep her centered when i'm helping people deal with anxiety or anger i often have you practice what do you say to yourself when all hope is lost in your brain that, you know what, I can do this. I'm going to be able to get through it. It's going to be okay. Whatever it might be, you want to have a mantra to be able to help yourself recenter and give up those negative feelings that all they do is feed pain, fear, anger, sadness. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer. It is, isn't it? How many things would we do if we weren't afraid? And I think that that is that overarching theme of this entire movie is so poignant to our own journeys. Oh, and it gives me chills. You can see him when he takes that fear and he is now harnessed it into defiance and anger. It becomes powerful. This is now a different Paul than from the beginning when he first kneeled. His eyes now have that look towards the Reverend Mother. He's no longer afraid of her. Now you can see her look starts to change as he becomes more defiant and looks directly at her. When we look directly at someone, which is different from when Paul was looking away and looking down, which is a show of subservience, looking directly at someone is a threat. He's getting stronger. And you can see that to that challenge, you see her look starts to waver. Enough. And she states enough, but the way that she says it is not from a place of authority, it's soft. Almost like she's telling Paul that that's enough to stop whatever he is doing. Whatever power that he is harnessing within himself, she wants him to stop. You can see him kind of breathing and he's trying to recover and then he brings his chin up and back. That is again a show of authority. That is a show of my dignity and I am still remaining and here I am. He does stand up, but move a step away. He's still unsure of her. If you had been unable to control your impulses, we could not let you live. And you see the hurt on Paul's eyes, that little look of you would have killed me just because I was not able to control that. I don't really think the hurt was towards the Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother. I think that the hurt was also towards the fact that his mom brought him there for this trial, knowing that 
he could die. And I think that this is the first moment that he really gets the gravity of that situation. Jessica? You see her enter the room with her head down, worried. She doesn't know what she's gonna see. It's also a show of submission to the Reverend Mother. And then you can see the relief on her when she sees that Paul's made it through this trial. He's still alive. But Paul's look when his mother enters, he doesn't even fully look at her. He's not sure how he feels about being put through this trial without even being told what exactly it was about beforehand. If you want to check out all of my videos and podcasts, ad-free, sponsor-free, click on the link below. Check out Nebula. That's where I post all my videos and podcasts and you can watch all kinds of exclusive content such as us eating overly hot wings or ghost pepper chips and our reactions to that. And it's not just my videos, but Legal Eagle, Sarah Z, Medlife Crisis, Nando vs. the Movies, Braincraft, and many, many more. All ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula. And bundled in for free when you sign up at today's sponsor, curiositystream.com slash Georgia Dow. Or click on the link below. And because you're watching this video, you can get Curiosity Stream for 26% off. That's $15 a year. Yes, less than a price of a movie or a very expensive latte. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series like Beyond the Spotlight, which this week focuses on Jimmy Donaldson, aka Mr. Beast, the world's first digital philanthropist. After becoming obsessed with YouTube at a young age, Jimmy built a viral video empire based on the joy he gets from helping others. This is the best way to support educational creators directly. For 26% off, you get Curiosity Stream and Nebula bundled into that for less than $15 a year. So just click on the link below or head on over to curiositystream.com slash Georgia Dow. It really helps my channel, so thanks. And thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. So that's my reaction on one of the most iconic scenes from the film, I think. Let me know what your thoughts are, and was this your favorite scene, or did you like another scene better? Hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, please hit subscribe.